Trieste, Slovene, Trust, German, Trieste, is a city and seaport in northeastern Italy. It is located towards the end of a narrow strip of Italian territory lying between the Adriatic Sea and Slovenia, which lies approximately 10 to 15 kilometers to southeast of the city. Croatia is about 30 kilometers to the south. Trieste is at the head of the Gulf of Trieste. The city has a long coastline and is surrounded by grassland, forest, karstic areas. The city has a subtropical climate, unusual in relation to its relatively high latitude, due to marine breezes. In 2018, it had a population of about 205,000, and is the capital of the autonomous region Friuli Venezia Giulia. Trieste belonged to the Habsburg monarchy from 1382 until 1918. In the 19th century the monarchy was one of the great powers of Europe and Trieste was its most important seaport. As a prosperous trading hub in the Mediterranean region, Trieste became the fourth largest city of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In the Fin de Siècle period it emerged as an important hub for literature and music. Trieste underwent an economic revival during the 1930s, and the free territory of Trieste became a major site of the struggle between the Eastern and Western blocs after the Second World War. Trieste, a deep water port, is a maritime gateway for northern Italy, Germany, Austria, and Central Europe. It is considered the end point of the Maritime Silk Road, with its connections to the Suez Canal and Turkey. Since the 1960s, Trieste has emerged as a prominent research location in Europe because of its many international organizations and institutions. The city lies at the intersection of Latin, Slavic and Germanic cultures where Central Europe meets the Mediterranean Sea, and is home to diverse ethnic groups and religious communities. Trieste has the highest percentage of researchers in Europe in relation to population. In 2020, the city was also rated as one of the 25 best small towns in the world for quality of life and one of the 10 safest cities in the world in 2021. Città della Barcalana, Città della Bora, Città del Vento, Vienna by the Sea and City of Coffee are also idioms used to describe Trieste. Chapter 1, Names and Etymology According to modern scholars the most likely origin is a Celtic word, tegeste, with the est suffix typical of venetic, derived from a hypothetical Illyrian word third market, etymologically related to old church Slavonic trg market, cf. Also a pitagium, the modern adetso. Roman authors also transliterated the name as tergestum. Modern names of the city include, Italian, Triesa, Slovene, Trust, German, Triest, Hungarian, Triest, Serbo-Croatian, Trust slash, Polish, Triest, Greek, Tau Epsilon Rho Gamma Epsilon Sigma Tau Eta Tergestion Czech, Terst. Chapter 2, Geography. Trieste lies in the northmost part of the High Adriatic in northeastern Italy, near the border with Slovenia. The city lies on the Gulf of Trieste. Built mostly on a hillside that becomes a mountain, Trieste's urban territory lies at the foot of an imposing escarpment that comes down abruptly from the Karst Plateau towards the sea. The Karst Hills delimiting the city reach an elevation of 458 meters above sea level. It lies at the junction point of the Italian geographical region, the Balkan Peninsula, and Metal European area. Chapter 2 Section 1 Climate the territory of Trieste is composed of several different climate zones depending on the distance from the sea and elevation. The average temperatures are 5.7 degrees Celsius in January, and 24.1 degrees Celsius in July. It has a humid subtropical climate. On average, humidity levels are low, while only two months receive slightly less than 60 mm of precipitation. Trieste, like the Istrian Peninsula, has evenly distributed rainfall above 1,000 mm in total, it is noteworthy that no true summer drought occurs. Snow occurs on average 0 to 2 days per year. Temperatures are very mild, lows below 0 degrees are somewhat rare and highs above 30 degrees Celsius aren't common. 
Maximum winter highs are lower than the average temperatures in the Mediterranean zone but with quite high minimums. Two basic weather patterns alternate, sunny, windy and often very cold days frequently caused a northeastern wind called Bora, as well as rainy days with temperatures of about 6 to 11 degrees Celsius. Summer is very warm with highs of about 28 degrees Celsius and lows above 20 degrees Celsius, with hot nights being influenced by the warm sea water. The highest temperature of the last 30 years is 40.1 degrees Celsius in 2020, whereas the absolute minimum is minus 7.9 degrees Celsius in 1996. The Triessa area is divided into 8A-10A zones according to USDA hardiness zoning, Villa Piscina with 8A in upper suburban area down to 10A in especially shielded and windproof valleys close to the Adriatic Sea. The climate can be severely affected by the Bora, a very dry and usually cool north to northeast catabatic wind that can last for some days and reach speeds of up to 140 km per hour on the piers of the port, thus sometimes bringing sub-zero temperatures to the entire city. Chapter 3 – City Districts Triessa is administratively divided in seven districts, which in turn are further subdivided into parishes. Altipiano Ovest, Borgo San Nazario Middle. Cantavello Middle. Prosecco Middle. Santa Croce. Altipiano Est, Van Middle. Basavitsa Middle. Gropada Middle. Apicina Middle. Padriciano Middle. Trebiciano. Barcola Middle. Colonna Middle. Cincanello Middle. Greta Middle. Grignano Middle. Guardiella Middle. Miramare Middle. Royano Middle. Scorcola. Barriera Nuova Middle. Borgo Giuseppino Middle. Borgo Terrasano Middle. Cita Nuova Middle. Cita Vecchia Middle. San Vito Middle. San Giusto Middle. Campia Lisi Middle. Sant'Andrea Middle. Cavana. Barriera Vecchia Middle. San Giacomo Middle. Santa Maria Maddalena Superiore. Catanara Middle. Chiardino Middle. San Luigi Middle. Guardiella Middle. Longira Middle. San Giovanni Middle. Rosol Middle. Malara. Chiabola Middle. Colonchoves Middle. Santa Maria Maddalena Inferiore Middle. Rort Middle. Santa Maria Maddalena Superiore Middle. Servola Middle. Poggipes Middle. Poggi Santana Middle. Valmora Middle. Altura Middle. Borgo San Sergio. The iconic city centre is Piazza Unita d'Italia, which is located in between the large 19th century avenues and the old medieval city, composed of many narrow streets. Chapter 4 History Chapter 4 Section 1, Ancient History Since the 2nd millennium BC, the location was an inhabited site. Originally an Illyrian settlement, the Veneti entered the region in the 10th 9th C. BC and seem to have given the town its name, Tergeste, since Terg is a Venetic word meaning market. Later, the town was captured by the Carni, a tribe of the Eastern Alps, before becoming part of the Roman Republic in 177 BC during the Second Istrian War. After being attacked by barbarians from the interior in 52 BC, until 46 BC it was granted the status of Roman colony under Julius Caesar, who recorded its name as Tergeste in Commentary I de Bello Gallico, in which he recounts events of the Gallic Wars. In imperial times the border of Roman Italy moved from the Timavo River to Formione. Roman Tergeste flourished, due to its position on the road from Aquilia, the main Roman city in the area, to Istria, and as a port, some ruins of which are still visible. Emperor Augustus built a line of walls around the city in 33-32 BC, while Trajan built a theatre in the 2nd century. At the same time, the citizens of the town were enrolled in the tribe Pupinia. In 27 BC, Triessa was incorporated in Reggio the 10th of Augustan Italia. In the early Christian era, Triessa continued to flourish. Between 138 and 161 AD, its territory was enlarged and nearby Carni and Catali were granted Roman citizenship by the Roman Senate and Emperor Antoninus Pius at the pleading of a leading Turgestine citizen, the Quaestor Urbonius, Fabius Severus. Already at the time of the Roman Empire there was a fishing village called Velicula in the Barcola area. 
remains of richly decorated Roman villas, including wellness facilities, piers and extensive gardens suggest that Barcola was already a place for relaxation among the Romans because of its favorable microclimate, as it was located directly on the sea and protected from the Bora. At that time, as Pliny the Elder mentioned the vines of the wine Pulcino, which were grown on the slopes. Chapter 4 Section 2 Late Antiquity the city was witness to the Battle of the Frigidus in the Vipava Valley in AD 394, in which Theodosius I defeated Eugenius. Despite the deposition of Romulus Augustulus at Ravenna in 476 and the ascension to power of Odoacer in Italy, Triessa was retained by the Roman emperor seated at Constantinople, and thus became a Byzantine military outpost. In 539, the Byzantines annexed it to the Exarchate of Ravenna, despite Trius's being briefly taken by the Lombards in 567, during their invasion of northern Italy, it was held until the time of the coming of the Franks. Chapter 4 Section 3, Middle Ages In 788, Trius submitted to Charlemagne, who placed it under the authority of their Count Bishop who in turn was under the Duke of Friuli. From 1081 the city came loosely under the Patriarchate of Aquilia, developing into a free commune by the end of the 12th century. During the 13th and 14th centuries, Triessa became a maritime trade rival to the Republic of Venice which briefly occupied it in 1283-87, before coming under the patronage of the Patriarchate of Aquilia. After it committed a perceived offence against Venice, the Venetian state declared war against Triessa in July 1368, and by November had occupied the city. Venice intended to keep the city and began rebuilding its defences, but was forced to leave in 1372. By the Peace of Turin in 1381, Venice renounced its claim to Triessa and the leading citizens of Triessa petitioned Leopold III of Habsburg, Duke of Austria, to make Triessa part of his domains. The agreement of voluntary submission was signed at the Castle of Graz on 30 September 1382. The city maintained a high degree of autonomy under the Habsburgs, but was increasingly losing ground as a trade hub, both to Venice and to Ragusa. In 1463, a number of Istrian communities petitioned Venice to attack Triessa. Triessa was saved from utter ruin by the intervention of Pope Pius II, who had previously been Bishop of Triessa. However, Venice limited Triessa's territory to three miles outside the city. Triessa would be assaulted again in 1468-1469 by Holy Roman Emperor Frederick III. His sack of the city is remembered as the destruction of Triessa. He then restored the city walls for the fourth time. Triessa was fortunate to be spared another sack in 1470 by the Ottomans who burned the village of Prosecco, only about 5.3 miles from Triessa, while on their way to attack Friuli. Chapter 4 Section 4, Early Modern Period Following an unsuccessful Habsburg invasion of Venice in the prelude to the 1508-16 War of the League of Cambrai, the Venetians occupied Triessa again in 1508, and were allowed to keep the city under the terms of the peace treaty. However, the Habsburg Empire recovered Triessa a little over one year later, when the conflict resumed. By the 18th century Triessa became an important port and commercial hub for the Austrians. In 1719, it was granted status as a free port within the Habsburg Empire by Emperor Charles VI, and remained a free port until 1 July 1791. The reign of his successor, Maria Theresa of Austria, marked the beginning of a very prosperous era for the city. Serbs settled Triessa largely in the 18th and 19th centuries, and they soon formed an influential and rich community within the city, as a number of Serb traders owned important business and had built palaces across Triessa. Chapter 4 Section 5, 19th Century In the following decades, Triessa was briefly occupied by troops of the French Empire during the Napoleonic Wars on several occasions, in 1797, 1805 and 1809. From 1809 to 1813, Triessa was annexed into Illyrian provinces, interrupting its status of free port and losing its autonomy. 
The municipal autonomy was not restored after the return of the city to the Austrian Empire in 1813. Following the Napoleonic Wars, Triesa continued to prosper as the free imperial city of Triesa, a status that granted economic freedom, but limited its political self-government. The city's role as Austria's main trading port and shipbuilding center was later emphasized with the foundation of the merchant shipping line Austrian Lloyd in 1836, whose headquarters stood at the corner of the Piazza Grande and Sanita. By 1913 Austrian Lloyd had a fleet of 62 ships comprising a total of 236,000 tons. With the introduction of the constitutionalism in the Austrian Empire in 1860, the municipal autonomy of the city was restored, with Triesa becoming capital of the Austrian literal crown land. In the later part of the 19th century, Pope Leo XIII considered moving his residence to Triesa or Salzburg because of what he considered a hostile anti-Catholic climate in Italy following the 1870 capture of Rome by the newly established Kingdom of Italy. However, Emperor Franz Joseph rejected the idea. The modern Austro-Hungarian navy used Triesa as a basin for shipbuilding. The construction of the first major trunk railway in the empire, the Vienna Triesa Austrian Southern Railway, was completed in 1857, a valuable asset for trade and the supply of coal. In 1882 an irredentist activist, Guglielmo Burden, attempted to assassinate Emperor Franz Joseph, who was visiting Triesa. A burden was caught, convicted, and executed. He was regarded as a martyr by radical irredentists, but as a cowardly villain by the supporters of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. Franz Joseph, who reigned another 34 years, never visited Triesa again. Chapter 4 Section 6, 20th Century at the beginning of the 20th century, Triesa was a bustling cosmopolitan city frequented by artists and philosophers such as James Joyce, Italo Zvevo, Sigmund Freud, Zorfka Kreder, Dragutin Keta, Ivan Kanker, Scipio Slatepa, and Umberto Saba. The city was the major port on the Austrian Riviera. Chapter 4 Section 7, World War I, Annexation to Italy and the Fascist Era Italy, in return for entering World War I on the side of the Allied powers, had been promised substantial territorial gains, which included the former Austrian littoral and western inner Carniola. Italy therefore annexed the city of Triesa at the end of the war, in accordance with the provisions of the 1915 Treaty of London, and the Italian Yugoslav 1920 Treaty of Rapallo. Triesa had a large Italian majority. In the late 1920s, the Slovin militant anti-fascist organization Tiger carried out several bomb attacks in the city centre. In 1930 and 1941, two trials of Slovin activists were held in Triesa by the Fascist Special Tribunal for the Security of the State. During the 1920s and 1930s, several monumental buildings were built in the fascist architectural style, including the impressive University of Triesa and the almost 70 metres tall Victory Lighthouse, which became a city landmark. The economy improved in the late 1930s, and several large infrastructure projects were carried out. The fascist government encouraged some of the artistic and intellectual subcultures that emerged in the 1920s, and the city became home to an important avant garde movement in visual arts, centered around the futurist Tullio Crali and the constructivist August Cernigoge. In the same period, Triesa consolidated its role as one of the centers of modern Italian literature, with authors such as Umberto Saba, Biagio Marin, Gianni Stuprich, and Salvatore Satta. Intellectuals frequented the historic Café San Marco, still open today. Some non-Italian intellectuals remained in the city, such as the Austrian author Julius Cugy, the Slovene writer and poet Stanko Vak, the lawyer and human rights activist Josip Furfia, and the anti-fascist clergyman Jacob Uchmar. The promulgation of the anti-Jewish racial laws in 1938 was a severe blow to the city's Jewish community, at the time the third largest in Italy. The fascist anti-Semitic campaign resulted in a series of attacks on Jewish property and individuals, culminating in July 1942 when the synagogue of Triesa was raided and devastated by the fascist squads and the mob. Chapter 4 Section 8 
World War II and aftermath. Following the trisection of Slovenia, starting from the winter of 1941, the first Slovene partisans appeared in Triesa province, although the resistance movement did not become active in the city itself until late 1943. After the Italian armistice in September 1943, the city was occupied by Wehrmacht troops. Triesa became nominally part of the newly constituted Italian Social Republic, but it was de facto ruled by Germany, who created the operation zone of the Adriatic littoral out of former Italian northeastern regions, with Triesa as the administrative center. The new administrative entity was headed by Friedrich Rainer. Under German occupation, the only concentration camp with a crematorium on Italian soil was built in a suburb of Triesa, at the Riziera di San Saba on 4 April 1944. From October 20, 1943 to the spring of 1944, around 25,000 Jews and partisans were interrogated and tortured in the Riziera. 3,000 to 4,000 of them were murdered here by shooting, beating or in gas vans. Most were imprisoned before being transferred to other concentration camps. The city saw intense Italian and Yugoslav partisan activity and suffered from Allied bombings, over 20 air raids in 1944-1945, targeting the oil refineries, port and marshalling yard but also causing considerable collateral damage to the city and 651 deaths among the population. The worst raid took place on 10 June 1944, when a hundred tons of bombs dropped by 40 Asaf bombers, targeting the oil refineries resulted in the destruction of 250 buildings, damage to another 7463 victims. The city's Jewish community was deported to extermination camps, where most of them were killed. Chapter 4 Section 8 Subsection 2 Liberation by Yugoslav Partisans On 30 April 1945, the Slovenian and Italian anti-fascist Ovoba de la Fronte, a National Liberation Committee of Marzari and Sovio Fonda, made up of approximately 3,500 volunteers, incited a riot against the Nazi occupiers. On 1 May Allied members of the Yugoslav Partisans' 8th Dalmatian Corps took over most of the city, except for the courts and the castle of San Giusto, where the German garrisons refused to surrender to anyone other than New Zealanders. The 2nd New Zealand Division under General Freiburg continued to advance towards Triesel along Route 14 around the northern coast of the Adriatic Sea and arrived in the city the following day. The German forces surrendered on the evening of 2 May, but were then turned over to the Yugoslav forces. The Yugoslavs held full control of the city until 12 June, a period known in Italian historiography as the 40 Days of Triesa. During this period, Hundreds of local Italians and anti-communist Slovenes were arrested by the Yugoslav authorities, and many of them were never seen again. Some were interned in Yugoslav concentration camps, while others were murdered on the caste plateau. British Field Marshal Harold Alexander condemned the Yugoslav military occupation, stating that Marshal Tito's apparent intention to establish his claims by force of arms, all too reminiscent of Hitler, Mussolini, and Japan. It is to prevent such actions that we have been fighting this war. After an agreement between the Yugoslav leader Josip Broz Tito and Field Marshal Alexander, the Yugoslav forces withdrew from Triesa, which came under a joint British-US military administration. The Julian March was divided by the Morgan Line between Anglo-American and Yugoslav military administration until September 1947 when the Paris Peace Treaty established the free territory of Triesa. Chapter 4 Section 9, Zone A of the Free Territory of Triesa In 1947, Triesa was declared an independent city-state under the protection of the United Nations as the Free Territory of Triesa. The territory was divided into two zones, A and B, along the Morgan Line established in 1945. From 1947 to 1954, Zone A was occupied and governed by the Allied military government, composed of the American Triesa United States troops, commanded by Major General Brian T. Moore, the commanding general of the American 88th Infantry Division, and the British element Triesa forces, commanded by Sir Terence Airy, who were the joint forces commander and also the military governors. 
Zola covered almost the same area of the current Italian province of Triessa, except for four small villages, south of Muggia, which were given to Yugoslavia after the dissolution of the Free Territory in 1954. Occupied Zone B, which was under the administration of Milos Stamatovic, then a colonel in the Yugoslav People's Army, was composed of the northwesternmost portion of the Istrian Peninsula, between the Myrna River and the Cape, Debeli Arctic. In 1954, in accordance with the Memorandum of London, the vast majority of Zone A, including the city of Triessa, joined Italy, whereas Zone B and four villages from Zona became part of Yugoslavia, divided between Slovenia and Croatia. The final border line with Yugoslavia, and the status of the ethnic minorities in the areas was settled bilaterally in 1975 with the Treaty of Osimo. This line now constitutes the border between Italy and Slovenia. Chapter 5, Government This is a list of the mayors of Triesa since 1949. Chapter 6, Economy During the Austro-Hungarian era, Triesa became a leading European city in economy, trade and commerce, and was the fourth largest and most important center in the empire, after Vienna, Budapest, and Prague. The economy of Triesa, however, fell into a decline after the city's annexation to Italy at the end of World War I. But fascist Italy promoted a huge development of Triesa in the 1930s, with new manufacturing activities related even, to naval and armament industries. Allied bombings during World War II destroyed the industrial section of the city. As a consequence, Triesa was a mainly peripheral city during the Cold War. However, since the 1970s, Triesa has experienced a certain economic revival. While Triesa was politically isolated until the end of communism, the fall of the Iron Curtain, the accession of Slovenia, Croatia, Hungary, the Czech Republic and Slovakia to the EU and the increasing importance of the Maritime Silk Road to Asia, and Africa across the Suez Canal resulted in an increase in the trade via Triesa. The port of Triesa is a trade hub with a significant commercial shipping business, busy container and oil terminals, and steel works. The port is part of the Silk Road because it can also be used by container ships with very large drafts. In this regard, the port of Hamburg and the state of Hungary have holdings in the port area of Triesa and the associated facilities will be expanded by the Italian state in 2021 with 400 euros million. The oil terminal feeds the Transalpine pipeline which covers 40% of Germany's energy requirements, 90% of Austria and 50% of the Czech Republic's. The sea highway connecting the ports of Triesa and Istanbul is one of the busiest row-slash-row routes in the Mediterranean. The port is also Italy's and the Mediterranean's greatest coffee ports, supplying more than 40% of Italy's coffee. The city is part of the Corridor 5 project to establish closer transport connections between Western and Eastern Europe, via countries such as Slovenia, Croatia, Hungary, Ukraine, and Bosnia. The thriving coffee industry in Triesa began under Austria-Hungary, with the Austro-Hungarian government even awarding tax-free status to the city in order to encourage more commerce. Some remnants of Austria-Hungary's coffee-driven economic ambition remain, such as the house brand Triesa Coffee Company. As a result, present-day Triesa boasts many cafes, and is still known to this day as the coffee capital of Italy. Companies active in the coffee sector have given birth to the Triesa Coffee Cluster as their main umbrella organization, but also as an economic actor in its own right. A large part of Italian coffee imports are handled and processed in the city. Two Fortune Global 500 companies have their global or national headquarters in the city, respectively, Asica Razioni Generali and Allianz. Other mega companies based in Triesa are Fincancieri one of the world's leading shipbuilding companies and the Italian operations of Wart Sealer. Prominent companies from Triesa include, Asigis APS Umbia, Adriatic Asica Razioni Spa Automarocchi Spa, Banca Generali Spa, Ginatel, Ginatelife, Hera Trading, Ili, Italia Maritima, Magiano, Nuvo Arsenale Carci by SRL, Gindal Steel and Power Italia Spa, Paturini Spa, Siderurgica Triestina, TBS Grug, U-Blocks, Telet, and polling and marketing company SWG. 
The real estate market in Triessa has been growing in recent years. The relevant land register law comes from the old Austrian legislation and was adopted by the Italian legal system after 1918 in Triessa, as well as in the provinces of Trento, Bolzano and Gorizia as well as in some municipalities of the provinces of Udine, Brescia, Belluno, and Vicenza. Chapter 7, Research and Education The University of Triessa, founded in 1924, is a medium-sized state-supported institution with 12 faculties, and boasts a wide and almost complete range of courses. It currently has about 23,000 students enrolled and 1,000 professors. Triessa also hosts the Scuola e Denozionale Superiore di Studi Avanzati, a leading graduate and postgraduate teaching and research institution in the study of mathematics, theoretical physics, and neuroscience, and the MIB School of Management Triessa, one of Italy's top five business schools. As a result of the combination of research, business and funding, there are a growing number of spin-off companies in Triessa and proportionally the highest number of startups in Italy, the city also being referred to as Italy's Silicon Valley. Neurala, a company specializing in artificial intelligence, has chosen Triessa as its European research center. Triessa has the highest proportion of researchers in Europe in relation to the population. They also appreciate the high quality of life and leisure time, so, as is often said, you can ski and swim by the sea in one day from Triessa. There are three international schools offering primary and secondary education programs in English in the greater metropolitan area, the International School of Triessa, the European School of Triessa, and the United World College of the Adriatic. Liceo Scientifico Statale France Prisiren, and Liceo Anton Martin Slomsk offer public secondary education in Slovene. The city also hosts numerous national and international scientific research institutions. Area Science Park Aletra, a synchrotron particle accelerator with free electron laser capabilities for research and industrial applications. International Center for Theoretical Physics which operates under a tripartite agreement among the Italian government, UNESCO, and International Atomic Energy Agency. Triessa Astronomical Observatory Istituto Nazionale di Oceanografia e Geofisica Sperimentale, which carries out research on oceans and geophysics. International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, a United Nations Center of Excellence for Research and Training in Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology for the Benefit of Developing Countries. ICS UNIDO, a UNIDO Research Center in the areas of Renewable Energies, Biofuels, Medicinal Plants, Food Safety and Sustainable Development. CASO Center for Advanced Research in Space Optics. The World Academy of Sciences. Inter Academy Panel the Global Network of Science Academies. Istituto Nazionale di Oceanografia, e di Geophysica Sperimental, a national public scientific research organization carrying out multidisciplinary studies in the field of Earth sciences. Istituto Nazionale di Fisica Nucleare. Laboratorio di Biologica Marina. Laboratory Tasked, Technology, and Nanoscience. Auto Botanico dell'Università di Triessa, Civico Auto Botanico di Triessa. The Office of the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics will be based in Triessa Porto Vecchio from 2021. The Central European Initiative has had its headquarters in Triessa since 1996. As a special feature, Triessa is the seat of the Università del Café, founded in 1999 by Illy. This competence center was created to spread the culture of quality coffee through training all over the world and to carry out research and innovation. Triessa hosts the annual It's Young Fashion Designer Competition. Chapter 8 Commercial Fishing Fishing boats anchor at Molo Veneziano near Piazza Venezia. In summer it is fished with lampere and in autumn and winter with ready di posta. In the Gulf of Triessa, because of the crystal clear, Nutrient poor water with little plankton, fishing in itself is challenging. The fishing season basically lasts from May to July. In terms of fish reproduction, 
Fishing is prohibited in August and restricted in winter. As of 2009, there are fewer than 200 professional fishermen in the city. There is also a small fishing port in the suburb Barcola. Some of the fish is sold directly from the boats or delivered to the town's shops and restaurants. The rare lychee from the Gulf of Triesa near Barcola, which are only caught at Sirocco, are particularly sought after because of their white meat and special taste and fetch high prices for fishermen. Chapter 9 Demographics As of 2013 there were 204,849 people residing in Triesa, located in the province of Triesa, Friuli Venezia Giulia, of whom 46.7% were male and 53.3% were female. Triesa had lost roughly one-third of its population since the 1970s, due to the crisis of the historical industrial sectors of steel and shipbuilding, a dramatic drop in fertility rates and fast population aging. Miners totaled 13.78% of the population compared to pensioners who number 27.9%. This compares with the Italian average of 18.06% and 19.94%. The average age of Triesa residents is 46 compared to the Italian average of 42. In the five years between 2002 and 2007, the population of Triesa declined by 3.5%, while Italy as a whole grew by 3.85%. However, in the last two years the city has shown signs of stabilizing thanks to growing immigration fluxes. The crude birth rate in Triesa is only 7.63 per 1,000, one of the lowest in eastern Italy, while the Italian average is 9.45 births. Since the annexation to Italy after World War I, there has been a steady decline in the Triesa's demographic weight compared to other cities. In 1911, Triesa was the fourth largest city in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In 1921, Triesa was the eighth largest city in the country, in 1961 the twelfth largest, in 1981 the fourteenth largest, while in 2011 it dropped to the fifteenth place. At the end of 2012, Istat estimated that there were 16,279 foreign-born residents in Triesa representing 7.7% of the total city population. The largest autochthonous minority are Slovenes, Croats, and Serbs, but there is also a large immigrant group from Balkan nations, 4.95%, Asia, 0.52%, and Sub-Saharan Africa, 0.2%. Serbian community consists of both autochthonous and immigrant groups. Triesa is predominantly Roman Catholic, but also has large numbers of Orthodox Christians, mainly Serbs. Chapter 10 Language The particular Friulian dialect, called Tergestino, spoken until the beginning of the 19th century, was gradually overcome by the Triestine dialect of Venetian and other languages, including Standard Italian, Slovene, and German. While Triestein and Italian were spoken by the largest part of the population, German was the language of the Austrian bureaucracy and Slovene was predominantly spoken in the surrounding villages. From the last decades of the 19th century, the number of speakers of Slovene grew steadily, reaching 25% of the overall population of Triesa province in 1911. In the late 19th century, following Austria's loss in the Third Italian War of Independence, the Austro-Hungarian government encouraged Slovenes and other Slavic peoples from other regions of the empire to immigrate to Triesa with the aim of Slavicizing the city. According to the 1880 census, Triesa had a total population of 74,544, including 67,995 Italian speakers and 2,817 Slovene speakers. According to the 1911 census, the proportion of Slovene speakers grew to 12.6% in the city center, 47.6% in the suburbs, and 90.5% in the surroundings. They were the largest ethnic group in nine of the 19 urban neighborhoods of Triesa, and represented a majority in seven of them. The Italian speakers, on the other hand, made up 60.1% of the population in the city center, 38.1% in the suburbs, and 6.0% in the surroundings. 
They were the largest linguistic group in ten of the nineteen urban neighborhoods, and represented the majority in seven of them. German speakers amounted to 5% of the city's population, with the highest proportions in the city center. The city also had several other smaller ethnic communities, including Croats, Czechs, Istro-Romanians, Serbs, and Greeks, who mostly assimilated either into the Italian or the Slovene-speaking communities. Altogether, in 1911 51.83% of the population of the municipality of Triesa spoke Italian, 24.79% spoke Slovene, 5.2% spoke German, 1% spoke Croatian, 0.3% spoke other languages, and 16.8% were foreigners, including a further 12.9% Italians and 1.6% Hungarians. By 1971, following the emigration of Slovenes to neighboring Slovenia, and the immigration of Italians from other regions to Triesa, the percentage of Italian speakers had risen to 91.8%, and that of Slovenian speakers had dwindled to 5.7% today. The dominant local dialect of Triesa is Triestein, a form of Venetian. This dialect and official Italian are spoken in the city, while Slovene is spoken in some of the immediate suburbs. There are also small numbers of Serbian, Croatian, German, Greek, and Hungarian speakers. Chapter 11, Main Sites and Vistas In 2012, Lonely Planet listed the city of Triesa as the world's most underrated travel destination. Chapter 11 Section 1, Castles Chapter 11 Section 1 Subsection 2 Castello Miramare The Castello Miramare, or Miramare Castle, on the waterfront 8 kilometers from Triesa, was built between 1856 and 1860 from a project by Karl Junker working under Archduke Maximilian. The castle gardens are laid out with a variety of trees, chosen by and planted on the orders of Maximilian. Features of the gardens include two ponds, one noted for its swans and the other for lotus flowers, the castle annex, a bronze statue of Maximilian, and a small chapel where is kept a cross made from the remains of the Novara, the flagship on which Maximilian, brother of Emperor Franz Joseph, set sail to become Emperor of Mexico. Much later, the castle was also the home of Prince Amadio, Duke of Alster, the last commander of Italian forces in East Africa during the Second World War. During the period of the application of the instrument for the provisional regime of the free territory of Triesa, as established in the Treaty of Peace with Italy, the castle served as headquarters for the United States Army's Trust Force. Chapter 11 Section 1 Subsection 3 Castel San Giusto The Castel San Giusto, or Castle of San Giusto, was designed on the remains of previous castles on the site, and took almost two centuries to build. The stages of the development of the castle's defensive structures are marked by the central park built under Frederick III, Holy Roman Emperor, the Round Venetian Bastion, the Hoyos Lelio Bastion and the Pomis, or Bastion a Fiorito dated 1630. Chapter 11 Section 2, Places of Worship The Saint Justus Cathedral. Named after the city's patron, Justus of Triesa, the church's interiors are decorated with Byzantine mosaics. It became a symbol of Italian Triesa during the Risorgimento. The Serbian Orthodox Church of the Holy Trinity in St. Spiridon. The building adopts the Greek cross plan with five cupolas in the Byzantine tradition. The parish forms part of the Metropolitanate of Zagreb, Ljubljana and all Italy. The Anglican Chiesa di Cristo. Sant'Antonio Taumaturgo. The Mekitarist Armenian Catholic Church. The Waldensian and Helvetian Evangelical Basilica of St. Sylvester. The Church of Santa Maria Maggiora. The Augustan Evangelical Lutheran Church. The Greek Orthodox Church of San Niccolo dei Greci. This church by the architect Matteo Perch, with bell towers on both sides of the facade, follows the Austrian late Baroque style. The interiors are full of golden ornaments. The Synagogue of Triesa. The Temple of Monte Grissa, a Roman Catholic church north of the city. 
Chapter 11 Section 3, Archaeological Remains Arch of Ricardo is a Roman gate built in the Roman walls in 33. It stands in Piazzetta Barbacan, in the narrow streets of the old town. It's called Arco di Ricardo, where Ricardo is a corruption of Cardus, the Roman street which crossed it. Folk etymology created a local legend, which says that it was crossed by King Richard I of England on the way back from the Crusades. Basilica Ferenz Paleo-Christian Basilica Roman Age Temples, one dedicated to Athena, one to Zeus, both on the San Giusto Hill. The ruins of the temple dedicated to Zeus are next to the Forum, those of Athena's temple are under the basilica, visitors can see its basement. Chapter 11 Section 3 Subsection 2 Roman Theatre The Roman theatre lies at the foot of the San Giusto Hill, facing the sea. The construction partially exploits the gentle slope of the hill, and much of the theatre is made of stone. The topmost portion of the steps and the stage were supposedly made of wood. The statues that adorn the theatre, brought to light in the 1930s, are now preserved at the town museum. Three inscriptions from the Trajanic period mention a certain Q. Petronius Modestius, someone closely connected to the development of the theatre, which was erected during the second half of the first century. Chapter 11 Section 4 Caves in the entire province of Triessa, there are ten speleological groups out of twenty-four in the whole Friuli Venezia Giulia region. The Triessa Plateau, called Crass or the Casso and covering an area of about 200 square kilometers within Italy has approximately 1,500 caves of various sizes. Among the most famous are the Grotta Giganti, the largest tourist cave in the world, with a single cavity large enough to contain St. Peter's in Rome and the cave of Trebisino, 350 meters deep, at the bottom of which flows the Timavo River. This river dives underground at Skopjan Caves in Slovenia and flows about 30 kilometers before emerging about 1 kilometer from the sea in a series of springs near Duino, reputed by the Romans to be an entrance to Hades. Chapter 11 Section 5 Beaches much of Triessa lies directly on the sea and is used as a port area. Nevertheless, there is the possibility to swim in the sea in the city centre, as in the bathing establishments El Pidocin, Banio Marino La Lanterna and Orsonia. The Banio Marino Ferroviario has been located in Viale Miramar 30 since 1925. Many locals and students use their lunch break or free time to go to Barcola, which is an urban beach to meet friends on the famous mile-long embankment. In the evening, many locals walk there between the bars with a view of the sea, the Alpine Arc, Istria and the illuminated Triessa. There are restaurants, cafes and ice cream shops there. However, there is no proper bike path from the centre to Barcola. Well known are the ten popular semicircular units on the bank consisting of a viewing platform, sanitary facilities and changing rooms, which are popularly referred to as Torpolini. In the area of the Excelsior bathing establishment, which is located on a historic sandbank, there were very elegant Roman villas and their sports and bathing facilities in antiquity. And already in the 19th century there were numerous restaurants and cafes with shady vine arbors for the excursion guests. The area of the sea around Miramare Castle is today a nature reserve. There are always fundamental considerations to rebuild the kilometre-long original sandy beach between Barcola and Miramare Castle and to build a large park-like sports centre by the sea in a previously unused park. In the fishing village of Barcola there are some of the few houses and restaurants in Triessa that are directly on the sea. Local fishermen, skippers and captains meet in the Skipper Point Bar Franza. The pine forest of Barcola is located directly on the sea and is a classic resort for the Triessa people in every season. One of the best running routes in Triessa leads from the port in Barcola along the sea to Miramare Castle and back. On the way there the view of the Alpine Arc with the Dolomites and on the way back the view of Triessa and Istria. The small bathing complex Banio de Stico is right next to Miramare Castle. Further towards Grignano, and Duino there are numerous bays and natural beaches. 
Alaginesta is a beach that is very popular with the locals. Due to the currents in the Adriatic, the water in the area of Trias is very pure and not polluted by suspended matter from rivers. The current is counterclockwise. Chapter 12 Culture the literary intellectual center of Triesa was always the existing Libreria Antiquaria Umberto Saba Corner via Dante Alighieri in the house via San Niccolo No. 30, in which James Joyce lived, the house via San Niccolo No. 32, in which the Berlitz School was located where James Joyce taught and came in contact with Italo Svevo, and the house at via San Niccolo No. 31, where Umberto Saba spent his breaks in the former cafe milk shop Walter. In this area, at the end of Via San Nicolo, there is now a life-size statue of Umberto Saba. While there are now numerous luxury shops in the pedestrian zone of Via San Nicolo, there used to be numerous cafes and restaurants, especially the Burger Beer Hall at number 17, which later became the very famous Burger Grand restaurant. Via San Nicolo number 30 is also the symbolic center of the novel of the same name by Roberto Corci from 2015. The Greek Orthodox Church of San Nicolo dei Greci, which is dedicated to Saint Nicholas, the patron saint of seafarers and whose interior already inspired James Joyce, is located by the sea at the beginning of today's pedestrian zone of Via San Nicolo. This is exactly where the famous, traditional Café Tomizeo is located. This coffee house, also located at the beginning of Via San Nicolo, was opened in 1830. It is the oldest coffee house still in operation in Triesa, and is still a meeting place for artists, intellectuals and merchants today. One of today's most important Art Nouveau buildings in Triesa, the Casa Smolas, has been in Via San Nicolo since 1905 at number 36. The traditional Eppinger Café, has been located nearby since around 1946. The building complex of the former Ras Palais, is also at the end of Via San Nicolo with the entrance to Piazza Repubblica. This inside and outside architecturally special building, has been completely renovated and has been a hotel since 2019. The Café Stella Polare is not far from here. This cosmopolitan coffee house was also frequented by Saba, Joyce, Guido Voghera, Virgilio Giotti, and in particular by the former German-speaking minority from Triesa. With the end of World War II and the arrival of the Anglo-Americans in the city, this café became a hangout place of many soldiers and a famous ballroom to meet young women from Triesa. Triesa has a lively cultural scene with various theatres. Among these are the Opera Teatro Lirico Giuseppe Verdi, Politama Rossetti, the Teatro La Contrada, the Slovene Theatre in Triesa, Teatro Mila, and several smaller ones. There are also numerous museums. Among these are Diego de Henrique's War Museum, Museo Sartorio, Rivoltella Museum Modern Art Gallery, Civico Museo di Storia Naturale di Triesa containing fossils of early man, Civico Orto Botanico di Triesa. A municipal botanical garden. Auto Botanico dell'Università di Triesa, the University of Triesa's botanical garden, two important national monuments. The Riziera di San Saba, comma, national monument commemorating the Holocaust, genocide. It was the only Nazi concentration camp with crematorium in Italy. The Foiba di Besavitsa, a national monument. It is a reminder of the killings of Italians by Yugoslav partisans after World War II, the last episode of an interethnic violence begun in the 19th century, with the rise of nationalism, and heavily intensified by the fascist government. The Slovenska Gospodersko Kulturna Zerza, Unioni Economica Cultural Slovena, is the umbrella organization bringing together cultural and economic associations belonging to the Slovene minority. The power metal band Rhapsody was founded in Triesa by the city's natives Luca Torelli and Alex Tiropoli. Chapter 12 Section 1 Media Newspapers Il Piccolo Primorsky Dnevnik La Gazzetta Giuliana Broadcasting Television Rai Friuli Venezia Giulia Tele Quattro Radio Radio Attivita Triesa Radio Fragola 
Radio Punto Zero Publishing Asterius Editor Lint Editoriale Chapter 12 Section 2, Sports The local calcio club in Trieste is Triestina, one of the oldest clubs in Italy. Notably, Triestina was runner-up in the 1947-1948 season of the Italian First Division, losing the championship to Torino. Trieste is notable for having had two football clubs participating in the championships of two different nations at the same time during the period of the free territory of Trieste, due to the schism within the city and region created by the post-war demarcation. Triestina played in the Italian First Division. Although it faced relegation after the first season after the Second World War, the FIC changed the rules to keep it in, as it was seen as important to keep a club of the city in the Italian league, while Yugoslavia had its eye on the city. In the championship of next season the club played its best season with a third-place finish. Meanwhile, Yugoslavia bought ASD Ponziana, a small team in Trieste, which under a new name, Amatory Ponziana Trust, played in the Yugoslavian league for three years. Triestina went bankrupt in the 1990s, but after being re-founded regained a position in the Italian second division in 2002. Ponziana was renamed Circolo Sportivo Ponziana 1912 and currently plays in Friuli Venezia Giulia Group of Promozioni, which is the seventh level of the Italian league. Triesa also has a well-known basketball team, Poloconestro Triesa, which reached its zenith in the 1990s under coach Bogdan Tanjevic when, with large financial backing from sponsors Stefanel, it was able to sign players such as Dejan Bodiroga, Fernando Gentile, and Gregor Fucker, all stars of European basketball. At the end of the 2017-18 season, the team, now trained by coach Eugenio Dalmasson, and sponsored by Alma, won promotion to the Lega Basket Serie A, Italy's highest basketball league, 14 years after its last tenure. Many sailing clubs have roots in the city which contribute to Trieste's strong tradition in that sport. The Barcolana Regatta, which had its first edition in 1969, is the world's largest sailing race by number of participants. Local sporting facilities include the Stadio Nerio Rocco, a UEFA certified stadium with seating capacity of 32,500, the Palatriste, an indoor sporting arena sitting 7,000 people, and Piscina Bruno Bianchi, a large Olympic size swimming pool. An often cited game in Trieste was on August 26, 1985. The American basketball player Michael Jordan dunked so hard during a Nike exhibition game that the backboard was completely broken. The signed jersey and shoes that Michael Jordan wore during the famous shattered backboard game were later auctioned. The moment the glass was broken was filmed and is often cited around the world as a particularly important milestone in Jordan's rise. Chapter 12 Section 3 Film Triessa has been portrayed on screen a number of times, with films often shot on location in the area. In 1942 the early neorealist Alpha Tau was filmed partly in the city. Cinematic interest in Trieste peaked during the height of the Free Territory era between 1947 and 1954 with international films such as Sleeping Car to Trieste and Diplomatic Courier portraying it as a hotbed of espionage. These films, and the later the Yellow Rolls Royce conveyed an impression of the city as a cosmopolitan place of conflict between great powers, a portrayal which resembled that of Casablanca. Italian filmmakers, by contrast, portrayed Trieste as unquestionably Italian in a series of patriotic films including Trieste Mia. And Ombre su Trieste. The city hosted in 1963 the first international festival of science fiction film, which ran until 1982. Under the name Science Plus Fiction, the festival was brought back in 2000. Recently a new interest in the city sparked with Italian movies such as The Invisible Boy, its sequel The Invisible Boy, Second Generation and Italian TV Series. Chapter 13, Trieste Cuisine It is a multicultural cuisine in which different ethnic groups are expressed through centuries of Central European and port-related influence. Typical dishes are, for example, the jota, 
Ministra de BC Space I, Rotillo di Spinacci in Straza, Sardoni in Panay, Capuzzi Garbi, Capuzzi Garbi in Tisha, Vienna Sausages, Goulash, Chivapi in Frito Misto Mare or as Desserts Presnitz, Fave Triestein, Titola, Crostoli Speciale, Struccolo de Pomi, Cugil Hupf, Rigo Janksy and the Trieste Tort. Typical local types of Trieste include the buffet, a small urban tavern with ready made local dishes served quickly, and the Osmitsa. A live original form of the Central European or Habsburg wine tavern with short, blocked opening times for the consumption and sale of self produced mainly coal farm products from the Trieste cast. The Capo Tristino, which intellectuals like James Joyce or Italo Zvevo are said to have appreciated, is considered a local coffee specialty. This miniature cappuccino in a glass cup is usually taken at the bar. Of course, the local seafood from the Adriatic is also used in this city. While the tuna fishing has declined, the anchovies from the Gulf of Trieste off Barcola are a special and sought after delicacy. These small fish have a particularly delicate taste and white meat, and are considered a particularly rare specialty. Sardoni Barcolani are marinated, baked and served grilled. Chapter 14, Transport Chapter 14 Section 1, Maritime Transport Trieste's maritime location and its former long-term status as part of the Austrian and, between 1867 and 1918, Austro-Hungarian empires made the port of Trieste the major commercial port for much of the landlocked areas of Central Europe. In the 19th century, a new port district known as the Porto Nuvo was built northeast to the city center. There is significant commercial shipping to the container terminal, steel works and oil terminal, all located to the south of the city center. After many years of stagnation, a change in the leadership placed the port on a steady growth path, recording a 40% increase in shipping traffic as of 2007. Today the port of Trieste is one of the largest Italian ports and next to Gioia Tauro the only deep water port in the central Mediterranean for seventh generation container ships. Chapter 14 Section 2 Rail Transport Railways came early to Trieste, due to the importance of its port and the need to transport people and goods inland. The first railroad line to reach Trieste was the Sudbahn, launched by the Austrian government in 1857. This railway stretches for 1,400 km to Lviv, Ukraine, via Ljubljana, Slovenia, Sopron, Hungary, Vienna, Austria, and Krakow, Poland, crossing the backbone of the Alps Mountains through the Semmering Pass near Graz. It approaches Trieste through the village of Villa Piscina, a few kilometers from the big city but over 300 meters higher in elevation. Due to this, the line takes a 32 kilometers detour to the north, gradually descending before terminating at the Trieste Centrale railway station. In 1887, the Imperial Royal Austrian State Railways opened a new railway line, the Trieste Puglia Railway, from the new port of Trieste to Puglia Cosina, on the Istrian Railway. The intended function of the new line was to reduce the Austrian Empire's dependence on the Sudbahn network. Its opening gave Trieste a second station south of the original one, which was named Trieste Sant'Andrea. The two stations were connected by a railway line that in the initial plans had to be an interim solution, the Rive Railway, but which survived until 1981, when it was replaced by the Galleria di Circon Valaziani, a 5.7 km railway tunnel route to the east of the city. With the opening of the Transalpina Railway from Vienna, Austria via Jesenica and Novogorica in 1906, the St. Andrea station was replaced by a new, more capacious, facility, named Trieste Stazione dello Stato, later Trieste Campo Marzio, now a railway museum, and the original station came to be identified as Trieste Stazione della Meridionale or Trieste Meridionale. This railway also approached Trieste via Villa Piscina, but it took a rather shorter loop southwards towards the sea front. Freight services from the dock area include container services to northern Italy and to Budapest, Hungary, together with rolling highway services to Salzburg, Austria, and Frankfurt, Germany. There are direct intercity and high-speed trains between Trieste and Venice, Verona, Turin, Milan, 
Rome, Florence, Naples, and Bologna. The Mesta Railway hub offers further connecting options with high-speed trains to Rome and Milan. Passenger trains also run between Villa Piscina and Ljubljana. Chapter 14 Section 3 Air Transport Triesa is served by the Triesa, Friuli Venezia Giulia Airport. The airport serves domestic and international destinations and is fully connected to the national railway and highway networks. The Triesa Airport Railway Station links the passenger terminal directly to the Venice Triesa Railway thanks to a 425 meter long skybridge. A 16 platform bus terminal, a multi story car park with 500 lots, and a car park with 1,000 lots give public and private motor vehicles rapid access to the A4 Triesa Turin Highway. At the interchange near Polmanova, the A4 branches off to Autostrada. A23 linking to Austria's Sud Autobahn via Udine and Tavisio. In the southern direction, this highway also offers seamless interconnection to Slovenia's A1 motorway, and through that to highway networks in Croatia, Hungary, and the Balkans. Chapter 14 Section 4 Local Transport Local public transport is operated by Triesa Trasporti which operates a network of around 60 bus routes and two boat services. They also operate the Apicina Tramway, a hybrid between a tramway and funicular railway, providing a more direct link between the city centre and Apicina. However, this tram network has been out of service since an accident in 2016. Works on reopening the line, however, are said to be starting in the near future. Chapter 14 Section 5 Public Transportation Statistics The average amount of time people spend commuting with public transit in Triesa e Gorizia, for example to and from work, on a weekday is 49 minimum 10% of public transit riders, ride for more than 2 hours every day. The average amount of time people wait at a stop or station for public transit is 11 minutes, while 18% of riders wait for over 20 minutes on average every day. The average distance people usually ride in a single trip with public transit is 4.6 km, while 6% travel for over 12 km in a single direction. Chapter 15 – Notable People Chapter 16 – International Relations Triesa hosts the Secretariat of the Central European Initiative, an intergovernmental organization among Central and Southeastern European states. In recent years, Triesa was chosen to host a number of high-level bilateral and multilateral meetings such as, the Western Balkans Summit in 2017, the Italo-Russian Bilateral Summit in 2013 and the Italo-German Bilateral Summit in 2008, the G8 meetings of Foreign Affairs and Environment Ministers respectively in 2009 and 2001. In December 2020, Triesa hosted three-party talks between the foreign ministers of Italy, Croatia, and Slovenia on the delimitation of their respective exclusive economic zone. In 2020, Triesa served as the European science capital selected by Euroscience. The city will host the G20 meeting of ministers of innovation and research planned for 5-6 August 2021. Chapter 16 Section 1 Sister Cities and Twin Towns Triesa is twinned with Beirut, Lebanon Douala, Cameroon Graz, Austria Santos, Brazil Southampton, England, United Kingdom La Havre, France, 